Hi everyone, I hope you're having a lovely afternoon and welcome to the How to Craft Network. My name is Claire Manning from Thirsty Brush and on this channel you can see tons and tons of crafty videos. I'll be doing another one today with some Thirsty Brush designs. But first of all, let's just see who we've got joining us today. We've got Hazel, Enid, Tracy, Karen, Debbie, Janny, Vicky, all the usuals and more joining now. So if I have missed your name, I do apologise. It goes quite quick there, but welcome to you all. I hope you're having a lovely day and looking forward to, fingers crossed, a bit of sunshine this weekend. I'm so excited. The first bank holiday I've had off work uh, in 2021. So I am going to hopefully be catching some rays with the family in the garden and maybe even put a burger or two on the grill. What do you think? Tell me what you're up to this weekend as well. And if you're new here, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up for this video if you enjoy it and hit the notification bell and you will be told of all the videos as and when they uh, get uploaded. Let's have a look. Trace is eating a lunch. <laughs> Karen got disturbed by the cats. <laughs> so welcome to you all anyway. So we're going to revisit uh, an older design. So I thought I'd have a go with some different techniques and I'm going to use the rosemary and uh, basil set. I think it says rosemary and thyme on the website, but it is rosemary and basil. Um, so I think that's just a typo. So uh, I did these herb designs, oh gosh, probably in our first year uh, on Crate and Craft and they were super popular with people wanting to do home decor with them. So of course you can make cards as well for if somebody's a bit of a foodie or a gardener and they just make great kind of cards that aren't a specific gender as well. But I thought I'd try a new technique um, with some paste and one of the stamps. So fingers crossed it works for you. I've had a little play, but I haven't made the whole card, so I do hope it works. Uh, so let's crack on with that. I will put some normal stamping as well. Um, but what my plan is, I've got a bit of scrap I can just stick under there. I've got a piece of card that um, I've cut smaller than my card blank. And I'm going to use one of these little tiny stamps. Can you see the rosemary comes in all these different sizes? And that's, that one's the basil. I'm going to use one of these tiny ones to attempt to make a pattern in some paste as my background, to make like a textured background. So rather than my Eureka, I'm going to use a little um, stamping block. You have to excuse me. We've just had the biggest lunch. We have like a monthly lunch here with Tony, Tim and the team. And uh, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really, really full and really thirsty, so I do apologise. I'll try not to fall asleep. Thank you. <laughs> right. So... Yeah, I've got my little stamp on a block and you could do this if you haven't got these stamps in particular. You could use any kind of little stamp. And I've got some pearly paste. So this is really beautiful. It looks just white, but it's got that beautiful kind of pearlescent uh, shimmer. So I'm going to cover this piece of card in this paste. Just got a little palette knife here. So I'm going to go all over. quite a lot on there and I'm not going to completely smooth it because I, again the whole point of this is that I'm going to create texture on this piece of card it's just a normal piece of card nothing special I think it's about 250 300 gsm something like that now this paste dries reasonably quickly so I'm working quite quick this is an eyes ink one but again use whatever you've got just some dry quicker than others Okay, so we'll show you the shine on that. You can probably see it reflecting a little bit, but I, I want to work quite quick to get this design stamped in. So I've got my little stamp and I'm just going to press into the paste. So as if I was stamping randomly on card, but no ink. 
it starts to just go a little bit where it's picked up too much paste on the stamp. Just got a little wipe just to clean it off. So we can get a good imprint. Yeah, it's starting to dry already, so I've got to be quite quick. So I'm just doing random. Smooth out that little bit there. It's a bit too distressed. -y. That's not even a word, is it? Distressed. -y. But no, we do these lots with our inks, don't we, on plain card and then use them as a background. But I thought it might be fun to try and get a kind of textured look. So I'm doing them all directions on and off the page. Do one more up there. I think that's enough. And I'll, show, I'll hold it up to you now so you can see. Like the look of that paint. Yeah, so it is, I call it paste. It's called luster paste, but it can be used. They're so good, these ones. I've been using a few more recently, but you can use them even on fabrics and all sorts. It says all surface. So I'm guessing that means it's uh, pretty permanent as well. Uh, but it does dry, particularly if you do a thin layer, it does dry quite quick. So that's why I've worked quite fast with that. So let me get that out of the way and I can show you properly what that looks like. So can you see the kind of pearl shimmer on that? Really pretty, isn't it? So I'm going to leave that to dry for a few minutes while I do the rest of my stamping. If it does need a little bit extra uh, to dry off with the heat tool, I can go back with that. But I'm hoping by the time I finish my stamping bit, that will have done. So yeah, it's, it does dry quite quick. And I've just knocked over a card. <laughs> right, so to go on top of this, I want to do uh, a couple of bits of normal stamping and colouring uh, some of the lovely herbs. I really like that the kind of rosemary one as well you can use as like heather. Um, the basil in here you can use as leaves for behind your flowers with other sets and things like that. So I'm going to do one lot of the basil and two lots of the rosemary. This must be a set I haven't used before, it's not coming up pretty easily. Oh gosh, knocking it all over now. I was trying to do it down here out of the way so I didn't knock myself in the face. Good grief, that's harder than normal. There we go. Just pop that out of the way. So I need one of those and two of these, and I'm just going to stamp in my black versafine ink. Who's out in the garden, Ruth? You're out in the garden doing flower pots. Beautiful. Does anybody grow herbs in their garden or in their on their kitchen windowsill or anything? I've tried a few times and then I just can't. I can't keep them alive. I'm no good. I'm terrible with plants. I managed to kill a cactus once. That's how poor I am with plants. So one more rosemary, but I'm actually not going to re-ink that stamp. I'm just going to pop it down and do it as a second generation. So that will come up a little bit more like grey. OK, let's wipe that down. Anyone else up to anything interesting today? Killed a cactus and an aloe vera. That's quite a feat, Tracy, to kill an aloe vera because they, they hold loads of water, don't they? <laughs> Isn't that the whole point of them, that they can hold like a year's worth of water or something? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one, though, that manages to kill all this stuff. OK, so let's add a little bit of colour to um, my stamped images. Where's my little brush? I'm 
I'm going to use some watercolour pens. I've turned these the gossip ones. I'm going to do a little bit of a test of some of these greens. I just grabbed a few quick. Um, oh, yeah, I like that dark. I just want to check a few of them like go together nicely. Caroline's been making tote bags. Amazing. I love that lots of you do all sorts of different crafts. I don't think I'd use that bright one. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the darker ones just to have a bit of contrast to, um, to the white and I've got a bit of grey and things like that to go in this card. So I'm going to use, I love using these pens almost like a, a watercolour ink or paint. So I put them on my glass mat or the top of your Eureka if you're using that and I spray a bit of water on. And then as I just start watering it down as if it was a paint and then I can do my usual paint skills. So I'm going to do a wash first of all. And this is the basil, did I say? Yes, basil. Yeah, it comes up rosemary and thyme on the website and ask me why. Put the thyme's in a different one. So I think there was four sets of these herbs. So if you haven't seen them before, have a check on my Instagram and it might be on the Facebook group as well. I did a big piece of wall art for my kitchen using all of the different herb designs in a big frame and it looked really cool. So I'm going to let that dry off for a second and then I can go in um, with the pen again in a minute to do some detail. But let's do one of the other colours. I find it easier to use the, the brush and put the colour down on your mat. So this one's kind of like a dull green. And when you're doing a tiny little areas like this on your stamps, really don't worry about whether you're in the lines or not. I quite like that look of it being loose. And if you go over too much, your die cut's going to get it off anyway. But I think it kind of adds to the modern look anyway, if it's not exact. So I'd never sit there and, and try and get in those tiny little holes. That's that one. Um, what was the other green that I picked? Was it this lighter one? Let's do the other rosemary. Or did I already use that one? I cannot remember. Yes, I think I need to use that kind of tealy colour, don't I? Oh yeah, that's a nice mix of the three greens together. As you can probably tell, green is my favourite colour. Well, it certainly is in terms of crafting and art because it just reminds me of nature and leaves and gardens and all those lovely things. I think my favourite colour to wear in clothes is probably blue. I wear a lot of blue and navy. So these images of the rosemary, because the little detail of the design is so small we don't really need to add any more detail with the pens but we can do it to these larger leaves here so I'm just going to get rid of that off my surface and then let's go back with this brighter green in case you've got these and you want to use the same colors I'm using 04 15 and 48 And then let's go back in with the brush nib and add some little flits just to add some depth there. Just turning my page so I'm not putting my hand all over 
where it might still be wet from where I've been the previous. I've also made with these um, herby designs, uh, talking uh, Caroline talking about tote bags. Uh, I got just like a plain calico, uh, creamy coloured tote bag, and I stamped in some fabric ink and then coloured in with some fabric pens, and it made a great like shopping bag for your fruits and vegetables and things. In fact, it was similar to one that I've seen that you can actually buy, but that one was about. Ten pound art, and I made mine for about two quid. <laughs> so I need to chop those out now. I've got the dies here that go with the stamp set, so I just need to do the rosemary twice and the basil once. Get my tape. Great fun stamping on tapes. Yeah, you're right, Carolina E. I haven't done it for a long time. You've reminded me to uh, to do a bit of that again. I've gone so wild with my cricket lately and putting vinyl on everything. I haven't done much stamping on uh, fabric lately. So secret squirrel guys, while I'm just lining these up, do look out for details of um, Christmas news soon. I don't mean Christmas news as in it's coming up to Christmas. I'm aware of that. <laughs> but um, as in Christmas releases from me and Tony. So uh, look out, there will be some news on that very soon. And I've seen Tony's and hers is amazing. And I'm really pleased with my own. So I think you're going to love them. Ooh, Christmas. Yes. So we're, uh, we're just waiting for Crate and Craft to say what days they're, they're starting their Christmas event. So it was in June, wasn't it, last year? So we're expecting around the same time, but we've got to just wait a little while for our dates. So I won't get rid of this because I need to do that one again for the second time. Just to show you that lovely rosemary. See that paste it's got everywhere? That <laughs> it's made my hand look all shiny. But yeah, you could do that rosemary in, if you did pinks and lilacs and whites and things like that, that would look just like Heather then as well. Let's get that one out while I'm there. Oh, yes, Karen, it's your birthday next week, isn't it? Is it the third? I remember you saying. You love Christmas in June, so. <laughs> it's so weird, though, isn't it? I mean, I was, I still am a big Christmassy person, but since working in this industry, you do it kind of all year, you design, and then we release it halfway through, and then the real Christmas comes. It's like Christmas never stops, really. It's always in some process. Three drawers of Christmas stamps, I'm a Christmas holic. <laughs> Can never have enough Christmas crafting stuff, right? Before designing my own, I, I was the same because I'd think, well, I'm not just making cards, I'll make wrapping paper, I'll make tags, I'll make decorations for the house out of it. So I'd want all different things to do, all different stuff with. Right then. Let's see what we've got now. So I've got a one of Tony's grey top folding note cards. So you'll notice that that's a lot bigger than my background that I've made. Um, so I wanted that on purpose. I wanted quite a large uh, grey border on this one. But I have, just to so it doesn't look like it's completely floating, I am going to put a little bit of glitter for a border as well. That's everyone else saying. When will the circle bump, uh, the one I did last week? I'm not sure at this point, Ruth, I'm sorry. Um, I do keep a list of ones that people ask for and if we have enough. 
Um, I'll look at doing them again, but I, I couldn't tell you at this point because I've got so much new stuff that I've, I've already kind of worked and planned, planned out for now. But I do, uh, I do keep a list, I promise. <laughs> Aldi, the supermarket, are doing Christmas in June to coincide with further COVID measures. Ah, so people can have their missed Christmases. That's nice, isn't it? So what, we will be in Turkey in June? That sounds madness. Turkey on the barbie. So that's still a little, tiny bit damp, so I'm just going to run my heat tool over that paste. It's just where it's gone a little bit thicker. It's fine in the centre where it was thin. Indeed, Karen, why not? Don't hold your tool too close when you're doing these paints because you don't want it to bubble because it is a, a paint or a paste and it's thicker um, and it can kind of burn or bubble if you hold it too close or for too long. So I tend to take a bit more time with it but I kind of move it around. But yes, the first time I played with these pearl ones, they're really, really pretty. I'm definitely going to be getting more colours of this. And of course, it would go beautifully uh, through your stencils and things like that. So let's glue that on. So I should end up with just a tiny little border of the glitter. Just to kind of bring it together, I thought that goldy, rose goldy glitter with the pearl and the grey went beautifully. A little bit of warp in the card there from that paste. Probably should have let it dry a bit more naturally itself. But just to remedy that for now, I'm just going to pop my die cut base over the top and that will flatten that out while I do the next bit. Let me ask a question there. White confetti ink. Yes, it is due anytime soon. It's been on order for a while and it's, it's in shipping. So uh, as soon as it arrives and gets unpacked, I will give everybody a shout when it's on the website. So for the sentiment for this card, I'm using Enjoy, which is from the Enjoy Yourself sentiment set so the enjoy word I've cut out twice with white so I'm just going to glue those together I've just done that just to make it a little bit more sturdy and give it an extra little bit of dimension but you can just do it once if you want I quite enjoy actually <laughs> revisiting some of these old ones in between our new releases just to you know, you might have them in your stash at home. Um, and maybe you haven't got them out for a while, because I know what we're all like. We buy our new stuff, don't we? And then you forget what you've bought before. So, and I quite kind of like mixing up then the collections that we've had and things. It is something that I keep in mind when I'm designing. Will this go with the other stuff that you've bought? Other things from other brands as well? Not just from me. I try and make it as versatile as possible. So just pop that enjoy on the black. Try not to get glue and paste everywhere. Cleo says hi. Hi, Cleo and Karen. <laughs> Oops. Just a bit more glue in there. I can't believe it's Thursday again already, can you? So, yes, that's flattened out nicely for us now. So, let's 
So let's start putting this together. I want some twine. So I've got a couple of bits here. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet, or maybe both. So I'd like a kind of bunch of the herbs down here. And I thought if I wrap some twine kind of around the bottom here, so it becomes kind of like one embellishment. And looks like it's been tied together. But we might actually physically be able to tie it together if we can. You could also add a little drop of wet glue or something. We'll try and do a one handed knot. Yeah, see if this works. Okay. Kind of worked. So on the back here, so it's, it's all wrapped up like one bundle of herbs as if you just pick them all from the garden. And then I'm going to pop a load of glue on that bit of twine and let's have it about there. Don't worry about the excess twine for now, we'll sort that out in a moment. I just want to give it a good press. Right, now let's go back to that twine. So I'm going to trim off this excess. Now let's do an extra knot to make sure it doesn't come undone. And I thought rather than, I want to have a bow, but rather than trying to do the bow on that existing bit and kind of maybe messing it up and it all falling apart, I thought if I trim off that, so that's kind of neat as it is, and then I'll do the bow on a separate piece and stick it on top. I thought that might be a little bit easier. So just a kind of basic bow. In fact, should we do two? Should we go wild and add them on or will it, do you think it will bulk out too much? Let's try it. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm pleased with that background of how the light really catches it on the um because i think it's because it's the pearly rather than just a plain white one i think you could absolutely do it with a plain paste um but it, it would kind of sit back a little bit so if i make one of these bows bigger than the other and let's maybe sit the larger one and then the smaller one on top to see if that will work if i put the large one there You do that cheat all the time with the bows, Tracy. Like, yeah, I just find adding my knot and then doing the bow separate. I, I totally agree. Even when I'm using like wider, I don't use wide ribbon too much on cards, but or even on a present, I prefer to make everything look neat and flat and then add all the extra bits on top. There's a little bit of glue there to dry off. There we go. So, and let's finally add on, this has ended up quite a quick card, hasn't it? And then let's tuck this nice sentiment. Considering there isn't anything of that, I don't think I did beforehand, did I? Just going to tuck it in. There, I think. So just something a little bit different, plenty of texture, plenty of layers and interest, um, but quite classic colours. What about gold or acrylic paint? Yes, that would be beautiful. I hope you can see the, um, the nice shine as well. I'm just going to step out of the way so we can get a picture. Oh, that luster of the uh, the paste comes out really well, doesn't it? You can spend a tiny bit more time getting your background a bit smoother if you like. But again, I'm quite rustic with things like that. I don't mind it having palette knife marks and things like that. And I think it shows that you've made it yourself. 
uh, and it just adds that kind of like organic natural feel. Uh, you could do three or four similar using the different variety of herbs. Absolutely, Tracy, you could. That would make a really nice set of cards. And in fact, they would be lovely kind of go-to cards to have in your drawer, wouldn't they? And then somebody pops around and says, I've got a nice card, or you've forgotten somebody's birthday or random event. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. And it's given you a little bit of food for thought for your crafting. I will be back with you. I've just recorded a show for Sunday. So that will be a 1 p.m. on Sunday. And do look out, as I say, for some announcements about new and exciting things coming. Have a wonderful afternoon, guys, and a wonderful weekend. Fingers crossed in the sunshine. Take care.